Hello, I'm JW, and today we have another light switch to have a look at. Now this one was actually sent in, and uh, the problem with this one is that uh, one side of it doesn't actually work anymore. You can press it, but it uh, springs back. The other side is uh, perfectly normal. And uh, there is a note that came with this one, so uh, let's have a look at that. Now here's the switch. It's a uh, double gang switch, so in other words there's two separate switches on the same plate, so no electrical connection between them. And these are also two-way switches, so we've got the uh, common terminal at the top and then two at the bottom. So we've used where we've got uh, two or more switches controlling the same light. Bollocks brand, and it's on a metal plate with a sort of shiny uh, metal finish. And uh, the problem with this one, as we saw there, is the fact that this one here turns on off normally, but this one is permanently jammed in this position, so if you try and turn it off, it just simply uh, doesn't move, it just... Uh, brings back to that position. Now this did come with a note which says uh, my good lady wife decided she could change a ceiling light. Enclosed is the resulting outcome. So it doesn't actually say what the uh, cause of this was but uh, we can make a fairly good guess and uh, just have a look on this uh, piece of paper here. Now light circuits in the UK are typically wired with the supply going to the light fitting and then a separate cable goes to the switch. So if I just uh, quickly draw that, in the ceiling you would have some terminals like that, in typically a ceiling rose type of arrangement. Power would come in, so you're going to have the uh, line coming in, and of course uh, neutral as well. And typically that is going to be contained within the same cable, so basically a two core cable. There was also an earth which we're not going to draw here, so that's not particularly relevant. And then the switch, which will be typically on the wall, say over here, uh, it's going to have its terminals like that, and say it has the additional ones in this case. And it's usually the case that you use the same cable to go to the switch, and in this case it's going to be the brown coming over here, and the blue coming over like that. And then the switch is simply between those two, so when the switch is off they're not connected, when the switch is on they are connected together. And the light in the room connects between this side here and this one here, and then that's where your sort of typical light bulb would be installed. Now what should happen if you're going to use the blue and brown cable is that the end of this should have some sort of blue or say brown marker over the blue there, and the same at the switch as well, to indicate that of course it is not a neutral, it's actually a switched line. So permanent power coming in here, and then this cable as a whole just goes down to the switch. So in the off position this isn't connected to anything, when you turn it on it connects the permanent line, and of course goes returns to the neutral, and the light turns on. Now that's all very fine, but uh, what's probably happened in the case of the uh, failure switch here is that somebody took down the light fitting, and of course if you take this away, all you're going to be left with is two blue wires and two brown ones. And the temptation then is to simply connect the two blues together for the neutral and the two browns together for the line. And then what you end up with is something like this. So your mains power, 240 volts, comes in here, goes straight into the light fitting, with the result of course that light turns on, and then you've also got two wires coming out of there with 240 volts between them going to the switch on the wall, which was shown here in the off position, of course not connected. So in that state the light will be on, and then someone goes to the wall switch and thinks, well we'll just turn the switch there, I don't necessarily notice it's the upside down. And of course if you connect these two together, what you're then doing is putting a short circuit directly between line and neutral, so a huge amount of current will flow there, it's going to blow the fuse or trip the circuit breaker or whatever, and obviously it's not going to work anymore. And because of the massive amount of current, when this uh, contact comes across, of course this is only going to be a 10 amp rated switch, it could be uh, hundreds of amps flowing there for a brief period, what happens is that the contacts in the switch end up being welded together permanently, and then you end up with this deal where the uh, switch is sort of permanently stuck in that position. And of course there's a big bang and uh, all that as well. So that's quite a common mistake that people make because of course they're just pulling the light down and then they just get uh, brown and blue wires. New light has brown and blue wires as well and of course just uh, shove them together. But uh, of course in many cases this is not actually a neutral, it's a switch line, so connecting that to neutral is going to cause a bit of a problem. So let's take this thing apart and see what's actually gone on inside. 
so we can remove the modules from the back here, just got some screws there, as is often the case, so we'll just take those away. And so we've got two here, so one of them actually works and the other does not, so we should be able to compare between the two items there. So it's screwed away there, and these are sort of springing, so I'll just attempt to uh, place them on the table. So there's just a metal plate there with the plastic insert. Uh, note this has the earth connection, as uh, all metal uh, plates cores do require that. Otherwise, if there was a fault here and a wire accidentally touched this, this faceplate will become live. It would not cause any segregation on the trip, it would just sit there waiting to kill somebody when they came into the room. So if you are going to fit metal light switches, this is essential, even though it's going to work without it. Sometime, of course, a fault could occur, then it's going to end up being a literally a death trap sitting on the wall. So here's the two actual switch modules. So uh, let's see what we have inside. Now we saw these in a uh, fairly recent video, so it's going to be a similar design. So yeah, there's the base of the top there with the hole, and then we've got the little spring there and the plastic uh, pivot piece, which just acts on the bits of metal in the bottom. So just uh, remove that. And of course this one will be surprisingly similar. So I can just uh, take that piece out of there. Now uh, this one here is the one which was uh, still working, and we can see the internal piece there will just move between the two terminals. So common in here, when that's in the down position it's going through to this terminal here, and then when it moves the other way it just comes through from here to the terminal here. So that's the one that's actually working, so no problem there. And then this will be the one which has failed. Now we can see there that the piece in the middle is actually completely solid, it doesn't actually move at all. And of course that's why the switch wasn't uh, clicking over to the other position. And what seems here is that the uh, contact here has actually just welded to that top terminal there. And of course now the other one can never be used, so it's just basically a permanent connection all the way through between those two terminals. Now if I just take out the screws here completely, we hopefully can get the whole thing out and have a closer look at it. And get all of the terminals away there. These do appear to be brass, so it needs to be a fairly decent type of uh, switch there. This is a uh, Volex uh, brand, which is the uh, same company as does Wilex and uh, Crabtree and several others as well. So let's see if we can just ease the terminals out. Now this end is the piece which just goes underneath the moving part, so it just sits up there in the centre, so this is not the part that's actually failed, it's these two components here. That was the other terminal from underneath, which obviously doesn't get used in that particular case, it was just a single on and off switch. So we'll just try and move that out of there. So uh, there we have it, so you can see that the two parts are basically now welded together at the contact point here. And that's pretty much what you'd expect, because although this piece also connects here, bearing in mind this was already in contact with the metal here, so as that moved up when the switch was pressed, the uh, arc would have formed here, because there's always a tiny arc in when you're making a switch, and of course that's where the uh, actual welding effect has taken place. So uh, there you have it, and you can see a bit of blackening on the back here. Well, obviously that's uh, burnt or got rather hot. So uh, there you go, that's basically welding the contacts of the switch together. If you actually do this, then the only answer, of course, is to buy another switch. It doesn't always happen, depending on the uh, exact amount of current that flows and various other circumstances, so sometimes you might be lucky and the switch could work. But of course, in reality, you shouldn't be uh, wiring it up wrongly in the first place. And another thing to mention here, if you've got a dimmer switch and you do this with a dimmer switch, then the dimmer will be destroyed every single time, because in a dimmer you're not just having a actual mechanical contact, though it will have one. There's also an electronic component, usually a triac, which of course if you're going to shove uh, several hundred amps through it's going to be destroyed pretty much instantly. The uh, silicon is just going to vaporise away, so beware fitting expensive dimmers. Make sure the circuit is working properly first, because if you uh, connect it wrongly and this happens then your expensive dimmer is going to be totally destroyed. Now these two are fairly solidly connected there, so I've actually broken that, but it's actually 
basically pulled the uh, metal surfaces apart so hence they're shiny at the bottom so you certainly can't uh, reuse this and compared to the actual undamaged contact this other one you see it's got that sort of extra sort of pad on the bottom there of course clearly different from this uh, horribly welded and basically it's a ball of uh, molten metal would have formed on the end so that is not what you want to do with the light switch because it's through there if you do that then the switch is going to be destroyed so as well as fitting up your new light you're going to have to go to the shops and buy a new switch as well and so if it's going to be a dimmer then it's going to be quite an expensive affair because they cost of course far more than normal switches do now so that item was sent in and if you want to send something in yourself then uh, please do details for that can be found in the description to this video and obviously other videos as well and until next time thanks for watching